Good morning, everyone. Yeah, so my name is Andrew Weaver uh, with the Jacobs Space Exploration Group uh, at NASA Marshall. So I'll be talking about plume surface interaction modeling for lunar site planning and design applications. We got next, thank you. Um, so the outline for the talk today, uh, first I'll give an introduction, a uh, brief intro to lunar site planning and where PSI, plume surface interaction, uh, fits in. Uh, then I'll provide an overview of our PSI modeling capabilities that we've been bringing to bear uh, for lunar site planning and then how we're integrating uh, those capabilities uh, to support lunar site planning and I'll make some concluding remarks. So as you know, uh, NASA is preparing to return to the moon as part of the Artemis program's moon to Mars goals, uh, with the first step in that journey to Mars being going to the moon, test systems for in, with a sustained lunar presence. So this involves you know, more than just the lander that we need uh, for a successful mission, we, we need multiple systems. Uh, you know, where are the astronauts going to stay for a long period of time? The habitation, how are they going to get around on the moon? The mobility, uh, their suits, EVA, uh, communication, you know, across different, uh, across the surface of the moon, and back with Earth, communication, navigation, how are you going to power all these elements, et cetera. So all these elements are coming into play here um, and, and interacting as well as with the environment uh, interactions, uh, whether natural or induced. And so we need to have this site plan for how to integrate all these different elements together. Um, and this is where it comes in here with PSI as being the, one of the induced environments that is uh, interacting with each of these different elements. And so uh, to be able to understand what those effects are and, and assess their potential uh, risk uh, to, to these different elements. So I'm gonna be focused on this presentation on the integration of this PSI modeling into this lunar site planning. Next chart, please. Uh, so first is an overview of our modeling capabilities. Uh, so ER-42 Fluid Dynamics Branch at NASA Marshall has been developing and continues to develop a cascade of predictive simulation tools for PSI, which includes our loci chem tool, which is a computational fluid dynamics or CFD tool to predict the flow field uh, from the lander, as well as the plume impingement. So you can see an example of that in the lower left uh, of our plume flow field and impingement on, on an asset. Uh, so you get like uh, get uh, metrics such as pressure, heat flux, integrated forces, and also can use those, those flow field uh, solutions as inputs into our other tool here in the middle, uh, DTA, which is our debris transport analysis tool to predict the particle transport impact metrics. Uh, so using that flow field and propagating uh, uh, the particles through that flow field you can see where those particles are going for different particle sizes, what those velocities are, connect energies, fluxes and impacts to different assets uh, over the lunar topography of the entire um, uh, of your landing region. And then lastly on the right is loci chem digum, which is a hybrid CFD engineering model uh, to predict plume induced cratering. Uh, and then when you combine that with our DTA tool, you can also see where those particles are going and get the particle impact frequency and accumulation in different areas. Um, and then, and then also down here, we have loci GFS, uh, our gas granular flow solver, uh, our higher fidelity, very capable tool. We haven't brought it to bear yet for the site planning, but it is a very capable tool to predict complex multi-phase, multi-physics plume interactions with the, with the regolith. Um, and while we're using all these tools, uh, we have been performing you know, validation assessments as we continue to develop these tools using available flight data, uh, which of course is more limited, and then ground test data, uh, and as we heard, you know, more tests are planned from as we talked about yesterday. So next chart. So now I'm going to talk about integrating these, uh, you know, the effects of PSI and all these different elements. So for example, uh, if you're looking at like landing pads, habitats, payloads, or really any other nearby assets close to the lander, one thing is, you know, the plume impingement. Can the, uh, the asset be, be affected by uh, the pressure, the thermal loads? Um, so we've been bringing, integrating our capability for, for plume impingement from Los like Chem, that can aid in the potential to assess like a tipping over the, uh, the payload or habitat or thermal degradation of that habitat or payload. And then also uh, around the right, you can see like uh, plume induced cratering. If you have EVA or mobility uh, elements, uh, can they drive over this after the, after the lander has landed or take uh, take off? 
So what is the slope, what is the size of the crater, the slope that, um, and so we've been using looks like Chem Digum to assess in the potential for excessive cratering slopes for mobility traverses and be able to reuse that landing site for multiple landers. If you go to the next chart, please. Uh, and then also uh, considering, you know, a debris uh, ejected uh, from, from the erosion from the lander. So the injecta, ejecta impacts, whether it's pitting, denting, puncturing holes, et cetera, uh, you know, so the different elements that may be affected by this is really anything that's nearby, I mean, whatever you put nearby an asset uh, and, or gateway, if it's, you know, for any particles that may uh, traverse at the orbit of gateway. Um, and so we've been, so you're going to understand what those influences are on these different uh, elements. So we've been bringing in loci chem and DTA tools uh, to support those kind of assessments for the where the particles are going, the potential impacts to a nearby asset. Um, and then lastly, on you know on, on the right here is a low, uh, the soil accumulation, uh, which uh, you know considering elements such as surface power, science sites, gateway, you know if, uh, you have dust that's accumulating on top of the lander, um, and it's bringing back to gateway or just you know, lofting up into to orbit there, you know, all these different uh, elements may, you know, want to understand what those influences are on uh, due to uh, accumulation. Uh, so for, you know, for example, science sites, if you have particles coming from, from the lander and it's accumulating there, uh, like cross-contamination, that affects what their, their science objectives there, or whether it's sensitive equipment, such as uh, batteries or solar panels that, was landing on there and, and degrading the performance um, of their equipment. Uh, so I'd be able to predict that. And so we've been bringing to bear the, uh, our low side chem digum and DTA tools uh, to, to support those kind of analyses uh, to, to predict particle accumulation and, and accumulation in different areas, uh, lunar surface nearby assets. So uh, next chart, please. So, uh, I guess I'm giving you a little bit of time here. Um, so to conclude, uh, I just want to say the PSI is an integral part of this lunar site planning. It has, you know, interacting with multiple architectural surface elements, uh, so, you know, surface operations, surface power, habitats, all these different thing, elements that have to come together. Uh, and we have been, you know, developing tools and continue to develop PSI modeling tools and, and support these needs to understand what these interactions are and to help mitigate potential risks. Um, and, you know, we've been experiencing rapid growth here uh, with, you know, as, as everyone's wrapping up, trying to do this um, site planning, understand what this environment is. Uh, so, you know, we're we're bringing on Loci DGFS tool. This is, you know, our uh, multi-physics, uh, uh, multi-phase tool uh, to, to capture, you know, a prediction of deep craters as well that you might have for, you know, for these bigger landers. Um, and, and we continue to perform our validation assessments as we go along as, you know, kind of an evolving process with, uh, you know, uh, using tools we have, validating uh, as we go along and, and continuing to develop. Uh, so thank you, and I'll be happy to take questions. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, we have a tiny bit of time, and there is one question that you sort of were talking about here at the end. Um, there's one question in the poll about, um, it's great to see all these predictive modeling capabilities. Uh, sort of what coordination are is NASA doing um, uh, with future landings, and also what funding opportunities? And this might not be for you. Uh, might there be for non NASA institutions to support this work? But can you talk a little bit more, just really briefly, about sort of the coordination with different landings? Um, we've been coordinating um, with uh, you know Lewis, Ruth Ann Lewis at NASA for. Uh, on our lunar site planning team. So this is what, you know, working to integrate all these different elements for the site plan, uh, you know, trying to, uh, so all these different elements, you know, people bring in expertise on power, you know, how are we going to uh, allocate enough power for where we need the illumination, you know, to make sure that where you land um, has, has the lighting that you need to see um, and, you know, direct communication back to earth or other places on, on the surface communications. So we have been collaborating on this team and providing uh, inputs for plume service interactions 